Hey guys, welcome to the 2019 Ram 1500. This is a 4x4 Crew Cab Limited. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it, this is probably my favorite truck on sale today. This thing is awesome. It's really well thought out. It's really nicely put together and designed. There's just so much cool stuff in here. Let's get into it. So in this video today, I wanted to give you some of my first driving impressions. We'll take a short walk around the truck, show you some of the features and everything that it has, and uh, just kind of give you an idea of what this thing has been like to drive these last few days. Um, I've had this truck for about four days, put a couple hundred miles on it, and I have to say overall, this has got to be the most comfortable uh, truck on sale today. This has the air suspension, and it's really interesting because I'm comparing this to the Rebel that I had a couple weeks ago, and that had the air suspension too, but this rides so much better. It's almost almost a little bit like a luxury SUV as far as ride quality goes. Maybe it's the tires, uh, maybe it's some suspension tuning, but this thing is just so comfortable. The seats are awesome. There's so many things and so many ways that you can spec these trucks to your liking and to your needs. The Ram 1500 has always been very versatile and that is even more true today. We have these little storage compartments here called the Ram Box. Nice little emergency opening for when you lock yourself in your Ram Box. Tailgate is really light. Easy to lift up. We have bed liner on this. Some cargo uh, lockers there where you can kind of lock your cargo in place. And of course, this bed cover here. It's a truck bed. You've seen one before. We have blind spot detection here in the taillights that can also account for the length of a trailer. Pretty cool tech there. And you have these little uh, steps that present themselves when you are ready to climb into your palatial Ram 1500. Probably the most impressive thing about this truck is just how much space there is inside. I have probably as much legroom in here than I do in a Maybach. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty crazy. These seats are very comfortable. There's a massive cup holder center area to rest your arm. This is all very luxurious, and this panoramic sunroof kind of adds to that whole experience. This is a $70,000 truck. It's not cheap, but I don't know, with this quality of interior and the way this thing feels and drives, I'd say it's probably worth it. All right, let's hop in here. So this is my first time that I've had a RAM with this new touchscreen. I tried this at the auto show, and uh, for some reason the demo unit they had back a couple years ago was really laggy. I don't really have many complaints about this touchscreen. It's big, it's a little bit far away um, from the driver's reach, but ultimately all week I haven't had any problems with using it, with uh, finding what I need to quickly and uh, operating all the controls. It's nice and high resolution, it has great brightness, it's responsive enough, and there are still buttons for just about everything you need here. You've got volume and tuning knobs. I think Ram has really listened to journalists and what customers have wanted, and uh, they've put together a pretty darn good system here. And uh, I'm quite impressed with the ergonomics and how all this, this works. We have some cool storage solutions here. There's one cubby, there's another cubby. This whole panel kind of slides back and forth. You have uh, all sorts of math homework here. Um, and then it says max fill, so uh, you don't run into whatever you're keeping in here with this when you move it back. Wireless charging, which unfortunately I don't have with my iPhone 7 Plus, but you have these really cool iPhone slots to, or phone slots to slot whatever your mobile device is you have. Uh, we could do a little bit of an audio test later on, go into what Apple CarPlay looks like, stuff like that, but basically you can kind of switch between Apple CarPlay and wherever your state, wherever you were before with this home button. 
a lot of this is customizable. Um, you know, if you really got to know this system, I'm sure you could have everything laid out just exactly as you want it. The nav looks a little bit antiquated, but with Apple CarPlay, why would you even use navigation anyway? You have controls here uh, for your, your drive mode selector, reverse, park, neutral. Uh, I love this system. It's really easy to use. It's very just quick and, and intuitive. You have four-wheel drive auto, two-wheel drive, four high, and four low. You can also lock your axles and then turn off auto stop start down here. All really accessible, all easy to find. Um, reverse camera is nice and high res. The 360 camera looks really good. No complaints. You can see forward facing cameras, bed cover, bed cameras. There's just so much, so much to do in this truck. You can even turn the screen off if you want. Maybe you have to hold it. Maybe you can't turn it off when you're in reverse. There we go. Yeah, you can turn it on, turn it off. Great. So, um, and even here in this gauge cluster, you have a ton of information. You have your vehicle info, speedometer, screen setup, messages from the vehicle to tell you if something's wrong. Trailer tow, you can adjust your trailer brake here. Stop start system, trip info. I wish some of this was kind of brought together a little bit more efficiently. There's just a lot of info and these menus are really kind of slow to, to scroll through. But once you find something you're interested in and you like, you can just kind of keep it on there. Even shows your tire pressure and, of course, your speedometer. This has the 5.7 liter e-torque V8. It's a mild hybrid system, which means that you probably won't ever notice it in the background. Let's take it for a drive and we'll show you what it's all about behind the wheel. So this system works at low speeds, at low RPMs basically as kind of a torque fill for when you're getting started. It kind of helps operate the stop-start, which works really, really well. It's almost seamless. There's a curb there. Sorry about that. Luckily, we're in a truck and it doesn't care. But it makes for this kind of really smooth power delivery. And um, I hate to make the comparison, but this truck is almost Lexus smooth. It's Really refined. The shifts from the eight-speed transmission are seamless. Uh, it is shifting a lot. A lot is a lot of gears. But when you want some power and you want a gear, it gives it to you immediately. And there's plenty of pull from this 5.7 liter MEV8. The only time that you might get a little bit of a, you know, a hint that this is a mild hybrid system is when you're braking, you can hear just a faint regen off in the distance. It's very hard to hear, and you only hear it sometimes. Otherwise, though, the brake pedal feels great, totally normal. Um, and this truck just drives really nicely. I mentioned earlier, the ride quality is phenomenal. Um, it handles decently well. It feels a little bit more SUV-like, and part of that is to do with some of the suspension architecture in the back. I do really, this is probably the first Ram that I really do like the air suspension in. And um, FC has done a really good job tuning that. And it, the nice thing about the air suspension is this, it kind of opens up more possibilities for your usage with the truck. You can lower it, get into parking structures or low overhangs really easily. You can raise it up, have a little bit more off-road clearance and approach and departure angles. It's really nice for when you're loading and unloading. Um, you know, I think it's a it's around eighteen hundred dollars of an upgrade. Uh, depending on how you're going to be using your truck, it's probably worth it. Um, and I can say it rides phenomenally well. As you can hear, too, we're going down the highway or the road here at about sixty miles an hour. Very little road noise, minimal tire noise, minimal wind noise. It's very very quiet. You can hear a little bit of regen going on there. This 8-speed is just phenomenal. Again, just super smooth, really seamless. I'm going to throw it into four-wheel drive auto here. It's really useful being able to change that on the fly if you need to merge out 
or make a quick acceleration and you have limited traction, this four-wheel drive auto system just hooks up. Two-wheel drive can get a little bit slippery, a little bit skittish, and uh, four-wheel drive auto just gives you all the traction you could ever need. It's awesome. turning radius on this isn't super impressive but again this is a this is a big truck and uh, luckily the steering is lightweight this transmission is really easy to shift between drive and reverse so if you do need to make a couple awesome powers adjustments it's easy to do I also have really good visibility in this see plenty out the rear view mirror. These little tiny fisheye mirrors on the side work great for blind spots. Show you guys a little bit of handling here on our quick chicane. So I put it back at a two-wheel drive there and uh, got a little bit of a slip from the rear end. Traction control kept us in check though. guys a little zero to 60 here. Again, not a lot of weight over the rear end, so you are going to get a little bit of slip. That's why that four-wheel drive auto really comes into play and uh, it's pretty useful on a daily basis. I've been using it quite a bit, especially in these slippery winter conditions where there's salt on the road or it gets wet out. All right, let's head onto the highway and we'll do an audio sound system test. I'll show you guys what this is like cruising about 70, 75 miles an hour. Again, really nice handling from this truck. It never feels too Larry or too like there's too much body roll. And just tons of power to merge. Get up to speed, no problem. So cruising at 75 miles an hour, there really isn't that much of an increase in wind noise. It's so quiet in here relatively. Um, pretty impressive for a big truck. I love this cruise control system. It's really easy to use. It's very intuitive. Now that I've gotten used to it these past couple weeks with first the Jeep Wrangler and then now this, I really like how easy it is to use. It's very simple to adjust your following distance. You can always use your traditional cruise control here, but with adaptive cruise control on this side, it's just great. You can hold for five mile an hour increment increases or decreases, and uh, I find it, I find myself using it all the time. Lane keep assist doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Um, ultimately, I just kind of found it giving me a little bit of a warning once I stray out of the lane. It kind of bounces off the lines a little bit, but it doesn't stay very well centered. And uh, in my opinion, I've just I don't think it works very well. That's one area this truck could use some improvement. Let's hop into Apple CarPlay here and see what Waze looks like. It's a smaller screen, but you can see all the info you need. We go into our music. Let's select our, uh, our sound test playlist. and track controls behind the steering wheel.
Garden does sound really good. Nice rich bass, it's clear. This is with all the sound adjustments, the equalizer leveled out. isn't a whole lot I don't like about this truck. The only really com real complaint that I have is that uh, lane keep assist is just, it needs a little bit of work. Yeah, really impressed with this truck. I think, um, I think we'll probably wrap it up there, but ultimately, you know, there's, there are so many ways you can spec these new Rams. And uh, this is a really good spec. I, I might do without the side steps. I could maybe uh, see that as kind of something that might get in the way someday if I'm in an off-road situation and I need to open the door and it'll come down and kind of break a mechanism or something. But I'm sure there's a way to turn that off in here. Um, there are just so many settings and so much adjustability within this infotainment that you can really get lost in some menus sometimes. It's probably something you shouldn't be doing while driving but it is really nice to have that adjustability in this truck. As far as shakes and rattles, not really experiencing a whole lot. I am hearing a little bit of a suspension rattle in this tester from the right or something. I don't know if it's something rattling around in the bed or if it's actually a suspension component. You can hear it there over some bumps and some, some potholes. guys well that's gonna wrap it up for this one those are my first thoughts on the ram 1500 limited crew cab 4x4 quite a mouthful but also quite a truck there's a this is a lot of vehicle for uh for a starting price of around 50 50 grand so let me know what you guys think in the comments any owners feel free to chime in on your experiences but um yeah, we'll get you guys in with a POV night drive later this week. And if you haven't already, head on over to Winding Road and check out our POV test drives and night drives on this as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.